yeah please tell me can i share my yeah i'll i'll uh, just a minute i'll share i'll give permission to share the screen now you can share yeah now you can share yeah okay Uh, validation sir number count okay sir here here digit sir 10 it is okay okay but when i enter my phone number 10 digits okay it's showing zero what should i do now oh, how many digits you have entered 10 digits it doesn't show just zero just okay. once see my okay screen so you use the data type as long long int line number 6 you go to long line number 6 but when i entered 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 0 it gives yeah. 10 once check this one also no no i understood i understood Listen. ah okay uh, you just see Uh, it's not like one two three four five six seven eight nine. You just read that number. Is it like one crore or one twenty three crore something like that? Okay. And when you enter eight nine, then it is it not like eight nine eight ninety crore something like that? Eight ninety four crores. Like uh, is is the number is bigger than this or not? Yeah, bigger than this number. Yeah. That's the thing, but it is going out of the range of the integer scope actually. Ah yes, sir. That is the reason you need to change the data type. Working with uh, some bigger numbers. Long, long int. Uh, you have to stop the program first. Okay. Okay. Long, long int. Line number six. No, 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 no. no. Line number six only. Before int, you write long, long, long. Okay, and the format specifier will be LLD. 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 in line number 11 also okay okay now you oh wait this. wait sir okay no oh, okay but sometimes okay. it shows oh. yeah but before what should i uh, when i entered in 10 10 digits not in series it gives 10 digits when i enter my phone number or else any numbers it mm. gives zero it's not you you just see uh, you read out this number first actually is it like uh, 83 crores 74 or 837 crores 42 lakhs 65991 am i right ah uh, yes sir so when you enter any other 10 digit number if it is below this Like if it is not like eight thirty seven crores and if it is like one twenty crores actually, for example. Okay. Then obviously that number is smaller, na. Ah yes. So, suppose suppose if the integer occupies two bytes, then its range is thirty two thousand seven sixty eight to plus thirty two thousand seven sixty seven for two byte integer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because for easy understanding, I am giving that. So if you enter forty thousand, it won't okay. work. It is also like uh, five digits only, na number forty-seven, forty thousand. Yeah. But it will work only up to thirty-seven thousand. Okay. Because it is crossing the integer limit actually. But sometimes it's work, work na. No, no. Sometimes means uh, when you are entering thirty-seven thousand, when you are entering thirty-five thousand, when you are entering thirty-six thousand, then it is working. Uh, that is your sometimes, okay. But when you enter forty thousand, then it is not working. That is some other time actually. Okay, sir. So you need to focus. Like, what is the range actually? Okay. So, like, uh, integer occupies four bytes in this case. Long, long integer it will occupy eight bytes. So it will allocate more space for the data. 
so you can work with long numbers okay sir then still if you work and if you try to enter like like 20 digits 30 digits then i say that you don't work with c language you shift to python or java you cannot oh, expect more than 20 digits like like more than 20 30 digits okay. you cannot you cannot expect your bicycle uh, to go to hyderabad emirate uh, from yeah. kakinada it will have its own capacity am i right uh, depends on my capacity capacity like c language also will have some uh, some upper limit limitation. some limitation we, we can't say you know, like uh, it should work for everything actually definitely it will have some limitation am i right yeah and to overcome that limitations we are going we are shifting to other programming languages that may be java or it may be python or it may be some other languages okay sir got it yeah got it okay. and also a program is yeah. when i'm getting uh, warning errors how should i overcome this uh, sure. warnings once i should like yeah this one sir who will count actually you are using this online gdb compiler na so yeah, yes, sir. you can see this it is a beta version actually okay on the top it is beta written means it may not have all the functionalities and features and strength what a normal desktop compiler uh, will have actually so what you can do is instead of uh, scan of you give get us you uh, you okay. just put comment for line number 14 Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Just, just a minute. What is this program actually? Mm, vowel count, sir. So, vowel like, how, how many, how many inputs you are giving? I vowel count CC. No, no. Consonant count. You will enter only. Okay, you will enter one string actually. In that string, you are going to count how many vowels vowel. and how many consonants are there. Yeah, yes, uh, sir. You do one thing. You put comment line for line number fourteen once. Line number fourteen. Uh, put it in comments. Okay, sir. Okay, and then in the next line, you write get s and you write str. And once you run this, yeah, same. It gives uh, warning. Hash include, hash include string, string dot h. Again, it gives. So this this actually ID is not allowing you to use get as function. It is saying that it is deprecated actually. Means okay. this ID it is not supporting this. But sometimes uh, once I show you other program. Yeah. You can use this format specifier, caret slash. This is also uh, it's giving a warning. Uh, yes, sir. The only thing is you have to shift the ID. ID. Two twenty one. There is other program. Okay, so I will ask sometime. I after no, after some time. 
no problem okay. no problem but the only thing is uh, yeah. online compilers they are good for some basic level programming okay. but when you go at advanced level like when you go with when you work with files concept then files are uh, files will store the data on your local disk then your online compiler won't have access to your local drive means if any program which is running on uh, cloud or in online uh, that won't access your hard disk space am i right yeah yes sir so definitely at some point of time you have to shift to a normal online compiler like basic uh, standalone compilers like code blocks oh okay sir not not at basic level but definitely at some point of time to execute some programs uh, you have to shift actually or there may be some uh, other alternative for this so you have to okay. read the documentation of this uh, online gdb compiler document means where you have, can you no no you have to search like uh, how to read string in online gdb compiler so you'll find ah. some alternatives for that actually ah okay sir because there is no problem in the logic of your program the problem oh. is only with the compiler with the id actually compiler is it clear so so some compilers may support some compiler may not support uh, i have other doubt also yeah yeah Uh, this one sir when i enter one input but it doesn't shows any results okay this is proper case in every word string letters okay okay fine so wait 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 wait, wait. We'll go a little bit up okay yeah go a little bit up here line number 31 it is str of i less than or equal to 90 uh, because 90 is the ascii code for capital z actually so when you write 90 na it less will do that so less than or equal to here yeah. okay next go down go down go down go down line number yeah, 44 so. one equal to 32 Yeah. Like. Same. Mm. Go up a little bit. Still up. Mm. Uh, get s str of i that is wrong it's just get s str that's it you are reading only one single character that's it there yeah okay it gives only you you str of uh, is equal to in line number 15 you write uh, you write uh, print of percentage as str print of and print this str no don't don't use ampersand because we are not reading we are simply displaying okay this is we call debugging first i am checking whether the string is properly Uh, taken or not once if it is taken then we can say uh, 
Okay. Now yeah. line number eighteen. It's str of zero. Oh my God! But I'm using your uh, online YouTube video. No. Same as this program. No, I can challenge that uh, you have done mistake because you are printing str. But in if condition, you are comparing character. So whatever the character you have compared, now that you have to use it actually. That is a mistake there. Oh, bottom, bottom, bottom. Str of zero. Now you can okay. try it once. First thing, you just start using code blocks. Uh, then you'll see much difference actually in your programming journey. Yes, sir. Now see, you are getting only single character. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go bottom. Yeah, for i equals to one, str of i not equals to that is that is not equals to null character. Line number twenty-five. Not equal. Yeah, because see, uh, the, at the end of the string there is a null character. So if it is not null character, then you are asking it to enter. But the problem is you are saying str of i equal to null. The first thing you cannot compare by using single equal to. When you write single equal to, it means that you want to assign null character into that string. Then the whole uh, the string is getting terminated there. So line number twenty five, it's str of a not equal to null character. You have to put not symbol. Okay, sir. Line number twenty five, str of i uh, not equal to null character. Yes. You remove that uh, the string what I said in the beginning to for debugging purpose. Uh, line number fifteen, you remove it. Okay, and you enter your your uh, that you can delete it. You can delete it; it's not required. But Only... comment and I put it in comment and just yeah because you may confused actually if you keep it that. After that, I will. Okay, okay. Run the program. You enter your full name. First name, last name, and middle name, like middle name and last name. U capital V capital. Yes. V small. No, no, V is capital letter. That is proper case is nothing but every word's first character will be capital, remaining will be lower case. Like you can enter this is to test otherwise a lengthy sentence. Yes, sir. Because you and see the main the object of this program is to convert the string into proper case, but you only enter into proper case, so you won't find any difference there. So it's better you enter everything in lower case. This is for testing, uh, something like this. Now you see every word's first character will be kept. Ah uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, yeah. explain this code, sir. Uh, this is course. This is uh, this is after arrays. We'll get really like uh, tomorrow. We'll start working on this. Okay. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, guys, uh, yesterday we have worked with uh, arrays concept, and I said arrays are of two types, uh, based upon. The data type and based upon the dimension actually, based upon data type, we can declare arrays as uh, uh, character arrays as well as uh, uh, numeric arrays. So initially we started working with numeric arrays. Yesterday we have seen uh, like single dimensional uh, numeric arrays, and uh, let's today let's have an idea on a multi-dimensional uh, numeric arrays. Say so for example, uh, just for example. I want to store uh, marks of an MBA student uh, after completion of uh, his uh, four years of uh, MBA degree. So, how we are going to store those marks? So, first of all, you need to understand the question. Like, you want to read marks of an uh, MBA student. After two years, because MBA is for two years, after two years you have to read it. 
So in these two years, he'll have four semesters, and each semester he'll have five subjects. So what you want to do is you want to store marks of uh, four semesters. Okay, whereas each semester he'll have five subjects. And this is what the concept of uh, multi-dimensional arrays is, and uh, this is zero row, first row, second row, and third row. This is zero column, first column, second column, third column, and fourth column. The intersection of row and column will give you the location of the element. So in single dimension array, you require only one single index. But whereas in multi dimension array, you require row, column index as well as the row index in order to store data into an array. So now we'll see uh, how to declare uh, this kind of multi dimension arrays. So before we start working with the programming part, if you want to understand where actually multi dimensionals are used in real time, then, then I'll say, So suppose if you see your mobile screen, in, in your mobile screen, you'll find uh, uh, so many apps, they are arranged in, in a row, comma, column order. So that's that's uh, where the multidimensional arrays will come into picture. Okay. And uh, the sitting position, when you are booking tickets at book by show, uh, the rows and columns will be there. The sitting position inside a train, uh, row, comma, column positions are there. So in real life, uh, you can see uh, the chocolates arranged in a box will be in row, comma, column position. In each and every part of our life, we'll work with uh, this double dimension arrays. The only thing is, uh, generally people, while explaining these concepts, they won't compare with the real life examples. Uh, then we won't get much interest on the subject. But real multidimensional arrays are used at every part of our life. So let's try to understand how we can declare an array, how we can assign value to it, and how we can display elements uh, from that array. So here, so code blocks is one powerful ID for writing C programs, even for writing C++. And I've seen most of the college's uh, recommends uh, working with uh, code blocks uh, ID only. So you can also plan code blocks ID. Okay. Or Dev C++ is also a good ID. Okay. So if you want to declare an array in double dimension array, then you have to decide the data type first, like in desert. And uh, I'm declaring the array name as ERR. You have to specify number of rows and you have to specify number of columns. I said, I want to declare an array with three rows and three columns, and I'll just put a semicolon. So when you say three comma three, or you can take the example of what I said here right now, four comma five, that's something, but uh, you can take the array, array, array name as like subjects and uh, you have four semesters, each semester you have five subjects. This is how you can represent it. Now, if you want to display the, the first element of the array, then you can say printf percentage d comma subjects of zero comma zero. That's nothing but zero comma zero is nothing but I'm displaying uh, this particular element this particular element I'm displaying. So after displaying this, you have to display this element. Then it will be 0, 1. Then it will be 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. So how many print statements you have to write like this? You have to write uh, five print statements. Okay. So if you want to give like uh, some gap between these uh, uh, subjects, then you can write like this. Like uh, this is 0, 0, first subject, 0, 1 first semester, second subject. As you have not initialized the array with any value, that's the reason it is giving some garbage values. So if you want to initialize the element arrays with some uh, values, then you can simply say zero. 
all the elements of your array will be initialized with zero. And zero, zero comma zero. Now what I want to do is, instead of writing these uh, five printf statements, uh, can you tell me what will be the good programming practice? Instead of writing five statements, what will be the good programming practice? Using for loops. Very good. So I can take uh, two variables i comma j, and here, here my row is fixed zero, but column is changing. So I'll put j here, and I'll say for for j equals to zero, j is less than five, and I'll say j plus plus. That's it, and you'll see totally five subjects max of course we kept zero actually so you got like zero 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 but this is only the first semester max if you want to print second semester max what you have to do you know you have to put uh, you have to go to next line so you have to say slash and here fine and then you have to use this uh, for loop once again here then you will get like first row all five subjects second row that's about second semester all five subjects now how many how many times you have to uh, use this set this is known as one set you have to write four sets now what i'm saying is why you write this for four times it is four semesters it's okay but for an engineering student if there are eight semesters then you have to use this particular uh, set of statements probably eight times so what you can do is better this particular for loop followed by this uh, particular uh, print of statement this whole code you can put it inside another for loop and that you can repeat it for four times and that's where your i will start i is less than four and i'll say i plus plus start the flower bracket here and uh, end it and you can end it here now you can see you'll see the matrix on the screen and here the zero should be changed to i and you can see the the array in the form of a matrix but still if you want uh, like uh, uh, the the exact representation of a matrix then you can give like uh, two empty lines from each semester then you'll get the data in the form of matrix but if you don't want to initialize all the elements to zero, and if you want to initialize your array elements with respect to subjects marks, then what you can do is, what you can do is here, I need to specify, like first row with uh, five subjects, This is first row with five subjects. You have to give comma, and then you have to update second row with five subjects. Again, third row with five subjects, fourth row with uh, five subjects. All the all the rows. Of course, I kept the same marks. You can change the different marks. This is we call double dimensional array initialization. So outer bracket indicates the complete array, and uh, the inside uh, this is one sh short array, another array, third array. Means a double dimension array is nothing but array of arrays. Actually, we'll call. And now you can see, uh, you'll find uh, the array with some data. Is this clear up to now, everyone? Just let me know. The initialization part. Yeah, clear, sir. Okay. Okay. So, if you want to read this data from the user, you don't want to initialize it, but you want to read this data from the user. Then, what you can do is for reading data also, you can use uh, the for loop. Like I can say for i equals to zero, i is less than uh, like four rows, and I'll say i plus plus. Then here I'll say for j equals to zero, j is less than five, and I'll say j plus plus. And here I'll say print of enter value. At at I'll I'll give you the dimension actually, percentage d comma percentage d, 
this is the dimension I'm giving. Okay, and in the place of first percentage di, second percentage dj semicolon. So scan f percentage d comma m percent of subjects is the array name. I of j is the index where you are going to store the data. That's it. And uh, enter value at zero comma zero index. Zero comma one index. Zero comma two. Zero comma three. Zero comma four. First semester five subjects we have entered. No second semester. Five subjects we have entered. Third semesters. Next fourth semester. And you'll get all the marks like this. See, suppose if you feel that uh, enter value at you want like uh, one one means first semester first subject, then you have to say plus one here, and you have to say plus one. Why? Because generally i and j we are taking variables to refer as the index. Index always starts with zero. So while printing, what you can do is you can simply say one. So what happens? You know, it will it will show you like. Uh, First semester, first subject. First semester, second, third, fourth, fifth. No second semester, first subject. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Third semester. Like this, you can you can you can do it. Okay, so this is how we can work with uh, arrays. And once once you know like how you can declare array. How you can store data into array? Then, based on that, you can do multiple programming examples, and that you have to do it by your own. Once, if you have any doubt, I'll explain you. But today, I would like to explain you one more, uh, one real life project on arrays concept. That is, uh, real life project example. I'll explain you. So I'll explain you the total uh, uh, concept. That is, uh, I have built a, a book my show application, and I'll share this source code also with you. Uh, book my show. So what I have done is, I, I, I thought of applying uh, the color to the output actually, and if you want to apply color to your output in C programming language. Then uh, you have to work with a function called uh, set console text attribute is the function actually, which is available inside uh, this uh, ponio.h header file. And for this, uh, you need to pass uh, totally two parameters, like for which you want to apply the color and uh, what color you want to apply it. So, so first one is what is your target? The target is get standard handle. std output underscore handle that's nothing but this particular property represents your screen and uh, color is nothing but what color you want to apply it so this is my own function i have written like void set color and i am reading that color and i am passing that color code to this uh, set console text attribute the function name itself says set console text attribute s capital c capital t capital and a capital okay now I have taken one variable seats of ten of twenty. That's nothing but ten rows, and each row there should be twenty seats. And 
Uh, initially, I'm assigning zero. Initially, when I'm assigning zero, is nothing but all the seats are actually uh, vacant. Zero indicates they are free actually. And I'm setting one color, set color of uh, ten, and I'm displaying a message like "Welcome to Book My Show, the one-stop solution for booking tickets." Set color one, and I'm displaying what are all the seats which are available. Okay, and uh, and I'm again setting the set color one. is nothing but for this uh, available seats message set color 6 again uh, underline i'm just changing okay and it will display available seats 10 into 20 we'll get 200 so we'll get a message like 200 seats are available now what i'm doing is i'm displaying the double dimensional matrix array where uh, for every seat which will be displayed in the form of zero is given the green color actually is given the green color and after that i am asking the user like how many seats you want to book and that i am storing in the variable tickets and uh, i am asking the user like if the tickets are greater than 100 200 because the total theater capacity is only 200 so if the user inputs a number like more than 200 then i want to display a message like the theater capacity is only 200 seats and i'll i'll stop the program and if the user says that he wants to book uh, Like five tickets or ten tickets, then what I am doing is I am using random function, and uh, I am taking one number uh, from one to ten, and second number from one to twenty. Means uh, like I have ten rows and twenty columns. So this R and C is going to decide the sitting position. I am allocating the seat to a person randomly, and then I am checking if seats of that particular location. Is equal to equal to zero means if the zero value is there, it means that seat is vacant. Then I I want to assign that particular uh, seat. So I just change that to one, and I'll say i plus plus. I'll increment the uh, i variables value. Why? Because the number of seats whichever is allocated that I'm incrementing. And after that, after that, again I'm printing that available seats. Means total seats is two hundred deducted seats. Suppose if I issue ten seats, then it will be like the one ninety. And here, this is the beauty of the program. Wherever the seat is changed to one, means where wherever the array value is changed to one, uh, that I am just putting in white. And wherever uh, the value is zero, uh, that I am just putting it to uh, green actually. So run this program and see how it looks actually. This is where. This is a book my show application. Now you can see here. So totally two hundred seats are there. Now it's asking the user like how many seats you want to book. And suppose if I say I want to book five seats, then you can see the whole matrix will be filled to one one one. That indicates that uh, the seat is allocated at this position, 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 and you will see totally five seats have been allocated. Again, you can run this program, and uh, this time you can say that the user is looking for like two hundred and fifty seats. It says our theater capacity is only two hundred seats. Again, you can run it. Okay, and if you say you want to book two hundred seats, then whole theater will be filled, and no seat will be vacant. Everything is occupied with uh, one. Again, if you want to test it, you can say. Like you want to book 199 seats, then you will see one green color zero. That's nothing but this particular seat is vacant actually. So this is how actually we have developed and book my show application in C programming language. Hope uh, you got uh, idea on this. Hope you understood how applications are built. And I'll share this code also with you. You can just try it. This is very interesting. actually on on some fine day i got some idea in my mind that why can't we develop a project in c language and then i just gave some thought to my mind that what what i can do it then slowly slowly i have done uh, uh, some research that how i can apply colors on those stuff and then i have given uh, this, this particular uh, uh, program actually i have created this program 
and i think uh, i have uploaded this program uh, i have one more youtube channel with the coding career uh, uh, academy i think i have uploaded the uh, video explanation i think i think i have explained that uh, i'll just share that link also with you you can just uh, check that and you can subscribe to that uh, uh, channel also one more channel recently i have created because uh, there are few people who are uh, requesting me to uh, create uh, videos in english language uh, for that purpose actually i have created one more channel and uh, but i am not much active on this channel but definitely uh, when i get time uh, i'll i'll do that uh, i'll do videos on this particular channel also what you can do is you can just uh, subscribe it and you can see uh, the content whatever is produced here you will see some content related to java okay and all other stuff okay uh, on java is there okay uh, some tricky questions also you'll find okay and book my show application actually book my show application using array in c language so this is the video actually you can just try it uh, the complete explanation so with complete detail explanation i have given actually like how you need to work with c and you can see the whole program i have written while explaining actually uh, so the whole program i have explained uh, by writing the code actually each and every line i have written uh, while explaining so you can just try that so guys did you understood uh, the working with multi dimensional arrays how projects can be built so there is no limit on the number of examples you can practice the yeah when we go to movie we book this series of uh, seats sir yeah 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 but in the code you book the uh, seats in random so yeah that's my wish actually because my client has asked me to book the seats in random order actually okay is this clear see there is no, yes. there is nothing like this is right or that is wrong actually Uh, my client said that uh, we want issue tickets in serial order because everyone will book seats by their choice so we want to issue them with a uh, random order that's it so based upon their luck they will get the seats understood actually and one more thing i can tell you in train flight you cannot book book seats in sequence order because the seats will be will be allocated based upon the weight actually because everyone is taking seats at one location then the in train or in flight the weight will be at one side actually so in order to balance that actually what they they do is they distribute the weight uh, across uh, different uh, parts of your uh, train or uh, flight even you can book it in see if you want to book it in serial order then that is very easy uh, you need to give the locations actually and book it in random order is difficult because you need to explore uh, Uh, random function there is this clear triveni yes yeah, sir yes clear yes. okay upender okay. is this clear understood and have you got the code once you check uh, you can download it from the chat window once check uh, yes sir i downloaded yes sir download it but my okay. question is i want to book particular seat how can i you ask the user which which seat you want to book user will say that one row and uh, third column then in that location you just go and uh, put that one mark over there that's it okay we need to add extra code extra code you have to add you have to ask the user enter which seat position you want so okay, after completing the random position no no like you have to remove that code uh, the random allocation actually okay because say i'll show you the code because okay. I, i am actually allocating seat randomly 
because that is what my project requirement is. But what you have to do is uh, here, here you need to ask the user like uh, at which location you want to book the seat. The user will enter row position and column position. Okay, uh, okay, sir. And that you have to continue that seat. Okay. So simple okay. print of and scan of okay. statement here. here. Yeah. Okay. Print of and scan of statements in C and R variable. That's it. Enter your row, enter your column. That's column. It. And remaining everything is same as it is. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So try this example. This is very, very interesting. And uh, tomorrow we'll see a few more examples related to multidimensional arrays. And day after tomorrow, we'll start working with uh, strings actually. Sir, if you don't yeah. mind, can I share? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 please, please. Okay, sir. Sir, here also I am using strings. Okay. Here, no warnings. I am getting no warnings. Go bottom. This is my code. You are using scan of carrot slash n actually. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Because of I am using with spaces. space also. With spaces. Yeah. So this particular scan of carrot slash n is giving warnings every way. Every name means? No, no. Uh, you, you got warning because of yeah. percentage s, am I right? And no, get sir, s. when I giving slash n also, depends on I need. I'm using strings or with, with space or without space. Uh, you show me where you have given this line number 34 in any other program. Uh, and there you have not used anything like get s and percentage s okay. then we can see actually because in this program we are not using get s we are not using percentages anywhere am i right yeah okay sir. yeah yeah so, so when now, i use it here I'll, here i am changing just percentages okay no warning okay So you open that uh, another program what we have taken. Uh, there you see the character sizing, how much you have given, like 100, 200, or uh, here you have 100. given 50. Nah? There also I you see. give like uh, less space. Uh, there I am changing can... here only. Okay, okay. After that, I will show you uh, other program also. Okay. No. Okay. I'm giving 100 here. Yeah, yeah. So many programs I took, only 100 only. Okay. We have to explore each and every line only. That's it. because this is a compiler related issue. So line by line, we have to keep that program, this program side by side. And each and every line, we have to check it out once. Other program? Uh, other program, wherever it is giving warning. Huh? Uh, that program, this program, we have to compare once. Once open that program also. Vowels and consonants program. Okay. Here we are using get s. So you can run this once. So just a minute. In file included from main part C3, user include stdio.h declared here. Gets str in file duplicated. Latest function is dangerous and should not be used. Phone number of words in this one. What you can do is once you copy this code, okay, and this code you paste it in that file and that 
code you put, put it in this file. Okay, uh, sir. What is this main.c is the file name in this? It's not main.c, no? Ah, yes, sir. Main.c. The file name is main.c. Yeah, main.c. Okay. And project name is like 226.c. Ah, yes, sir. 226.c. 226.c is your project name, am I right? Ah, yes, sir. And file name is main.c. Yeah. Okay. There also you just once go and check. Can I copy this? Or you do now? one thing. You do one thing. Here, uh, you remove get s and you use that caret slash and symbol. You remove this get s. Okay. Yeah, and uh, square brackets caret slash. Right. Now you can run this. Same. And then Warnings. Yeah. Line number 14 here, warning. 14 is not, it, it's not allowing that actually, but in that file it is allowing. So we need to identify what is the okay. file name. And can project. I reduce my string length? Uh, yeah. Once. We, we have to try it. That's it. It's only trial and error. Same. So you can copy this code and paste this code there in that file, which is not giving error. And that code, you can put it here. Two, not nine. Okay, sir. Yeah. Same. Still it is going there. Main dot C sixty-three. You can remove this once now. Now you can remove and show me that previous score. You can stop this. Okay. Yeah, you can just keep your old code actually, which is not giving an error. Old code? Uh, with the space code? Yeah, like the code which is not giving any warning. You okay. run that actually. Uh, this one, my old code. Okay. The run it once. Forty-eight. Okay, sir. This is not giving any warning message. Any warnings. Okay. Now you show me the code which is giving error once again. This is not giving error. This one. Okay. This one, na? So now ah, yes, sir. you one. remove comment in this, put comment there, and let's check it out once again. Oh, yes, sir. And here you remove this ampersand before this str symbol, 63 line number. 
Ten percent is one. Ten percent, ten percent, hundred percent. No, no, no. Okay. That keep as it is. And you remove it. Okay. And now you run it once. But this is reading function. No, no. I know it. Uh, I tell you. There is other problem. Okay. You rectify it. Later. Oh, okay, sir. okay. The problem is uh, the problem is with the compilers and their behaviors actually. Here, uh, when you are using ampersand symbol before in character array, uh, it is saying that explicitly you need not to give the address. I'll automatically consider it. Means character arrays are passed by their address by default actually. Okay. Scanf is the function. For that, you are passing an str, and you are using ampersand. And according to system, uh, as str is an array, if you don't give ampersand, also no problem. It will take its address only implicitly. Actually. Okay. Automatically, it, it takes. It but takes its address only. Only ampersand in another program, it works. Yeah. Where? Example here only. Okay. Here I am using. No, you are not using ampersand. That's where the program is not giving warning. Okay, sir. Two strings kind of. Oh. Oh. You can you can open any other program, which is giving warning, and oh, there okay, you sir. remove ampersand so that you easily understand. You remove ampersand here. Yeah. Get as you remove it and ampersand also you remove it. Ampersand you open. Stop and remove ampersand. I will remove ampersand here. Can yeah. I remove? Line yeah, number remove. 14. Remove. Okay. But whereas in normal IDs, if you work now, if you give ampersand, if you don't give ampersand, then it won't give you any warning actually. In code blocks or any other IDs. Okay. What should I write here in comment lines? Nothing like uh, str is a character array. Uh, by default, it's passed by reference. You can write str is a character array. By okay. default, uh, its reference is passed. By default, by default, its address is passed. By default, its address is passed. That's something that you did not give comparison symbol uh, in advance, okay. actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. So, how many Indians are there in your class? Two members, sir. Only two members only. Two members. Okay. And they